Hello everyone, sorry I haven't um, posted for a little while, this is, uh, I've just been so busy with GCSE stuff that uh, I haven't been able to do the final uh, final piece for paper three. I hope your exams are going successfully, paper one, nice and good I thought, paper two, very uh, very testing, but I think uh, overall it was it was an okay paper, it was just about fair, so I hope everything's going okay. We're going to start off with paper three, so ultimately, once you've read through all the rainforest stuff, the, the potential is going to be, should development go ahead of building like a road through the Peruvian rainforest. One thing I want you to always make sure you're thinking about when answering the potential question here, remember I really don't know what's going to come up in the exam, but it's likely to be something about development, is that... Should the development go ahead? Now, I've said, and I'm going to stick my neck out here and said, ultimately, yes, the development of the road through the Amazon rainforest should go, uh, no, through the Peruvian rainforest, sorry, should go ahead. Uh, but one thing that I'm going to keep as a recurring theme throughout the, uh, through the, throughout the decision making exercise is this idea and this concept of sustainability. Okay. So, uh, sustainability. And legal development. Okay. That's something I want us to continually focus on. Otherwise, you don't need any more um, logging that is going to be uh, illegal, anything like that. We've got to make sure that it's a, a legal development. So I'm going to um, carry on with that theme. So thinking it's got to be legal. And from there, this idea of sustainable it's not even an idea really and that this sustainable development has worked in brazil okay to improve the lives of brazilian people uh, so there's no reason why if it's not managed properly it can't be done well in uh, peru as well um if we look at it in terms of yes we know that if we develop these things legally it improves job prospects for local people and obviously this idea of uh, improving quality of life. I'm just going to put QOL for quality of life. And if we carry on, it's going to bring in some more tourism and trade, which are the, the two main key things in this final page, that final page that it really talks about. And remember, Peruvian's goal is to cut poverty... by 50% by 2020. You're not going to be able to do that without um, developing the rainforest, quite frankly. Um, okay. And all of that development will, will help things like um, it increase stuff like access to uh, sanitation and clean water. If we have a look at this page, uh, one sec. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? If I'm hooked up quickly, here we go. If we have a look, for example, at this page, it gives us a, a really good idea of exactly just how um, things like in the rural areas, which is what we're talking about, access to clean drinking water is about 70% or 69%. Access to sanitation, so only half of the rural population have access to sanitation. When we compare it to that urban environment, it's much different, okay? And we're constantly, as geographers, we're wanting to improve, grow our national income, uh, income uh, reduce infant mortality, improve the amount of doctors per thousand in the population. All of these things, if we want to improve, we're going to have to um, develop... A resource in Peru, and that resource is going to be um, is is going to be the rainforest. Okay, if we have a look at a potential counter argument, then we don't have to consider the counter argument. We can just go in saying yes, absolutely. However, if we're on a more rounded or balanced approach, um, then it is important just to realise that we are going to have a big impact. And of course, if we chop down trees, trees are a massive store of carbon. And this relates to climate change. So we're essentially 
increasing climate change by doing uh, by doing this. Half of the world's forests. Uh, will be destroyed in 100 years. Sorry, have been destroyed in the past 100 years. So there's a good chance that in 100 years' time there's not going to be um, any uh, any forests available. It's a bit like uh, glaciers as well. They're starting to melt at quite, um, quite a massive rate, really. And... So it's important to realise that there is a balance to saying no. But I think if you take the geographer's balanced approach as well, my argument is you have to have some kind of development of the Peruvian rainforest. I don't see how it's not possible. Um, one thing that's really important is also making sure that you um, bring in some outside knowledge from other case studies. And the, uh, the one that we've studied in our classes is Borneo, okay, which has massive problems with illegal deforestation, uh, things like farming, and, of course, the big one is palm oil. Okay. And where deforestation has worked in Borneo, it's been legal and sustainable. Um, but there has been a, a lot of illegal development. You could also argue that there's also been some legal deforestation that's also had a massive, massive impact as well. But make sure you bring in this kind of additional case study knowledge. And I'll bring it down here. It adds a lot of depth to your argument, basically. And is, is very much worth bringing into any kind of big uh, nine mark that you might get asked here. Okay. So... Uh, overall there's a, a potential essay structure you could say something like uh, this so ultimately yes I do think it'll be developed have our introduction where we discuss X, Y, Z I think it could happen uh, saying overall what's your opinion um, but also throughout you've got to make sure we have this idea and this concept of sustainable and legal development And that will really help add a bit more weight to your answer. And and I think that's a fair way of looking at it as well. It is about having um, potential sustainable development. So we'll just have a quick look um, in your paper free revision guide. Um, we've got a drop down down Wednesday. But let's have um, a quick look at an answer that we put together. Uh, I mean, oh, if I missed the stirrup, I did it, I didn't do it, but it's, um, it's a good answer, really. So, study figure three, um, road development in the Peruvian Amazon, and, and this is like a potential answer. Do you think the proposed road development should go ahead? So, let's go straight into it. This answer will argue that the road should be built in a sustainable way by conserving the environment and allowing economic and social development in Peru. Well, let's just begin... First of all, I always like it in, a, in an answer when the person sets it out straight away. It makes it easier for the examiner, basically. So it should be built nice. And already we've got this idea of sustainable um, development going in there and economic and social development in Peru. Um, building road will lead to uh, national scale economic and social benefits. Figure three shows that Peru is very poor with access to clean drinking water, 22 percent lower than in urban areas. We could even put our, in our GN, uh, GDP and make it more specific. The road will make access to infrastructure better, reducing isolation for local communities, increase tourism, and allow access to formal jobs in the mining industry. This will allow increased tax and trade revenue and prove to improve its HDI from 77th in the world. Okay, we're starting to really uh, use and study figure three. Uh, for example, in, in, uh, for example, palm oil of 12 billion to uh, Malaysia's GDP, making it an NEE. Okay, and what we started to do is bringing some of our own ideas there from other case studies. Therefore, uh, the road will have national scale benefits. However, the rainforest is also globally significant. Figure one, so starting to use that booklet again, shows that high biodiversity is essential and 10 species are lost per day. Also, rainforests are carbon sinks, storing carbon, which is significant in reducing the effects of climate change. Therefore, to stop the rainforest gone in 100 years, we need to have global and national conservation laws to stop the 50% of deforestation, which is illegal. 
In conclusion, to have a sustainable uh, figure whilst reducing the development gap is essential to re reduce illegal logging through global and local action and allowing the government to have more control in the long term. So we've answered that question. Yes, I, we do think it should go ahead. However, with the caveat that it should be sustainable and uh, and we've used the resource booklet and come into other things. Just some ideas uh, just to make sure um, we remember. And let's just zoom it in a little bit just so you can see. Um, so the road should be built. National scale and social benefits. Uh, figure three, using figure three, increased tourism. Peru to improve its HDI, which is currently quite low. Uh, palm oil, 12 billion. Figure one, high biodiversity and global and national conservation laws. Stop 50% with deforestation illegal. And a sustainable future whilst reducing the development gap. And that's really... I think that's a really, really important final bit there is that we want to produce this sustainable future whilst reducing the development gap. And you're only going to be able to do that through developing resources, OK, in a country like Peru. It's how all of our what we might consider developed um, countries have had to go through over the past 200 years to get to where they are, OK? Right, any questions, come and find me. We also have our Wednesday drop-down day after your science exam, where we'll be focusing on all of this um, stuff as well. All right, good luck. See you later.